I've wanted to make this video for some time now, after watching Asset Cross's video about macrotransactions in Destiny 2. I agree with most of the points that he made in his video, and was quite astonished at how much a new player has to shell out in order to access all the content in the game. And not only that, but how utterly ridiculous it is to try and figure out what content you need to buy. But as I kept thinking about it, a thought came to mind. Isn't this how most MMOs are with their paid content? So out of curiosity, I went ahead and compared the cost of buying all available content in other MMOs to Destiny 2. I have all the cost for each MMO I'm going to talk about and broke it down into four parts. Upfront slash entry cost. Basically, how much it costs to load into the game and start playing. Cost for expansions. Cost for bonus DLC. This is content that are not part of expansions, for example, dungeons. And the cost to play for one year. The info for the last section I'm not going to show until after I've gone over the costs of each MMO I'll be covering in this video to show a clearer picture of the cost between MMOs towards the end. Now there's a lot of MMOs out there and I'm not going to cover all of them. I'm only going to cover the ones that are very popular or have established IPs. The first ones are going to be ones I'm not all too familiar with, then I'll work my way into ones I know more about. Also, I want to mention before I start that the main focus of this video is strictly about the cost of playing these MMOs. Let's start off with RuneScape. RuneScape has two types of accounts, non-members and members. As you can guess from the names, non-members are the free accounts, and they only have access to 20% of the content available in the game. And member accounts require a subscription. They grant you access to all the content available in the game. And memberships are shared between Old School RuneScape and RuneScape 3. Much like how retail and classic WoW subscriptions are shared. And there is no extra paid content. EVE Online also has two types of accounts. Alphas and Omegas. The Alpha accounts are the free to play accounts. Buying a subscription upgrades your account to an Omega account, which grants you access to all of the expansions available in the game. And there is no extra paid content. Lord of the Rings Online has three types of accounts. Free, Premium, and VIP. The Lord of the Rings Online has a lot of expansions. The ones that were released between 2007 and 2013 are free for all players. The prices for the paid expansions for the Lord of Rings Online ranges from $20 up to $40 for the standard editions, and the various bundles cap out at $130 at max. VIP members have access to the expansions from 2017 all the way up to 2020. And there is no extra paid content. Star Wars The Old Republic is also another MMO that has three types of accounts. Free, Preferred, and Subscriber accounts. The first two expansions are free for all players. And one cool thing about this MMO is that all expansions remain unlocked after subscribing for at least one month. And they remain unlocked even after your sub expires. And there is no extra paid content. Guild Wars 2 has multiple account types. Basically, there's a free account, and there's multiple versions of paid accounts. Guild Wars 2 has four expansions with two types of expansion bundles. And Guild Wars 2 also has bonus DLC that is not available for purchase in the Steam store, that you can only buy in-game. The bonus content is referred to as the Living World. If you've played Destiny 2 recently, 
It's similar to the seasonal model, where you can play narrative experiences that are supposed to fill in the gaps between expansions. The one main difference between the Liven World and the seasonal model from Destiny 2 is that you can still play through the content to this day. Can you imagine if you can still play content from the seasonal opulence in Destiny 2? Crazy, right? Crazy! Black Desert Online. This one is very simple and easy to understand. It's a buy to play MMO that's $10 when not on sale, but sometimes it's given out for free. Plus, all expansions are free, and they have no plans to charge for additional content in the future. What the fu That's insane! Oh my god, how the fuck can you do that? Oh my god! Okay. Oh god. These next couple of games I'm gonna knock out at once because it's very simple. They're both 100% free. I'm referring to Lost Ark and Warframe. And not only that, they don't have any extra paid content. Because these games are 100% free, I'm not going to include them in my yearly cost calculations towards the end. Now, besides Lost Ark and Warframe, here are some other MMOs that I'm more familiar with. The New World is another buy to play game that costs $40 when it's not on sale. Currently, there are two expansions for New World. The first one, Brimstone Sands, was free for all players. And their most recent expansion, Rise of the Angry Earth, has just been released and is going for $30. Currently, there is no extra paid content for New World. The Elder Scrolls Online is also another buy to play game. Normally, it's $20, but regularly, it goes on sale for around $5 to $10. And sometimes, they even give away the game for free. The Elder Scrolls Online has a lot of expansions and extra paid content. Their first expansion, Morrowind, is free for all players. And whatever their recent expansion is, it's always going to be $40, which is Necrom currently. And if you want any previous expansions, that's where things get a little bit tricky. The easiest way for a new player to purchase all of their expansions at once is to buy the Elder Scrolls collection for the most recent expansion, which has all of them bundled together. And another simple way to gain access to all of their previous expansions is by becoming an ASO Plus member, which is their subscription service. By becoming a member of their service, you gain access to all of their previous expansions except for the current one. And not only that, you also gain access to all of their extra paid DLC. As far as purchasing bonus DLC goes, it's a little complicated for this game. Besides paying for a sub, the only other way to gain access to their bonus DLC is by buying them directly in the in-game shop with premium currency. Fortunately, the Imperial City DLC is free for all players. I will have the conversion rates for the high-end and low-end packs displayed. And sometimes these currency bundles go on sale which can change these rates. Not to mention, you also get some premium currency bundled with your sub. But going with the worst possible rate, each DLC pack roughly costs $16 or $21.30 or $37.33 for DLC bundles or previous expansions that are sold in the indie game store. Final Fantasy XIV has two paths to play the game. There is a free trial version that lets you play the first two expansions and all the way up to level 70 with no restrictions on playtime for free. 
But do keep in mind, this version of the game is very restrictive in other aspects. The other path to play is, I would say, the most annoying way to buy into a subscription-based game. You have to buy the game first before even thinking about sub-options. The base game is sold for $20, but sometimes it does go on sale. Most recently, it was on sale for $15. And as I mentioned before, the first two expansions are available to free trial players and players who have purchased any edition of Final Fantasy XIV. And in order to gain access to the rest of their expansions, you have to buy their latest expansion, with the cheapest option being $40. And lastly, the king of MMOs. Wait, no, 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 not that king. There we go. World of Warcraft. Now look, to all those who rolled their eyes or shrugged, listen here. I don't give a fuck about your feelings. I only care about facts, and according to Google Trends, no other game has ever come close to WoW's popularity. And deal with it. The World of Warcraft has two ways to play. They have a free trial version that lets you get to level 20, or you can pay for a sub. And all expansions, except for the current expansion, are available for subscribers. They sell different editions for the current expansion, but the cheapest option is $50. And finally, here's the cost for playing Destiny 2. Destiny 2 is most certainly a free-to-play game, despite what Cross said in his video. Sure, you can't access some of the paid content, but I mean, come on, that goes without saying. If you're curious to know what is available to free-to-play players, then you can check out Swazical's video about his free-to-play journey. Destiny 2 has 5 expansions, with their final expansion coming out next year. The best way to buy the expansions is through the collection bundles. And to help newer players, I made a graphic categorizing the Steam Store product page to make it easier to find out what expansions you should buy. There is only one bonus DLC pack you can buy directly from the Steam Store. The rest you have to buy through the in-game shop, much like Guild Wars 2 and The Elder Scrolls Online. And now we finally reach the main topic of this video, comparing the pricing between all these games. The only games I'm not including in these comparisons is Lost Ark and Warframe, since they are 100% free. The top number shows the cost for playing the game without any expansions for an entire year, and the bottom number shows the cost with buying every single bit of DLC available for that game. A little side note about Destiny 2's DLC costs. This is calculated with Lightfall and the Final Shape, without buying any of the seasons, and buying all the dungeon keys separately. The reason why I didn't include the price of seasons into my calculation is because they don't persist once the expansion year ends. Also, this cost could possibly become lower once they bundle Lightfall with their older expansions, and hopefully a year after the Final Shape comes out, Bungie will bundle all the expansions and extra content and one complete bundle, including all of the dungeons. Oh, a man can dream though. A man can dream. Now, do I think Destiny 2 is expensive? Honestly, no. And don't get me wrong, I don't like the monetization in game, nor do I support it. But their pricing for content falls in line with the yearly cost of a subscription based game. The big difference is the other games make it easier to buy their content all at once. The real question you have to ask yourself is, do you want to spend money to experience content beyond what's available for free in Destiny 2? To those of you that made it this far in the video, thank you. I appreciate you. Now, I know all of you are smart and intelligent people, so I don't need to tell you how these buttons work. Right? Of course not. Also, if you want to talk about video games or whatever, you can head over to twitch.tv forward slash honestpug to catch one of my streams. You can find out whenever I go live by checking my Twitter. Currently, I'm giving away free PC games based off of my follower goals. I have at least over 200 games to give away listed under the giveaways channel and my Discord. And once again, thank you for watching my video. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Be safe out there. 
and until next time.